Just under a year ago, I made a video called You Cat, All You Need To Know. And now we are back with a part two, but this time it's all about the BMAT. For those of you who are new here, hi, my name is Atusa and I am currently a first year graduate entry medicine student at the University of Birmingham. So as I said, today I want to talk to you about the BMAT, also known as the Biomedical Admissions Test which if you aren't familiar with already, it's an exam used by a number of universities to try and choose applicants for programs such as medicine and dentistry and veterinary. Now, I will get into the ins and outs of this exam, how you can prepare, what exactly it tests for, and all of that kind of stuff, but as I mentioned at the start, I did make a similar video to this last year on the UCAT exam, and in that I basically talked you through some of um, the techniques you can use, what exactly that exam tests for. So if you're planning on sitting both of these exams this year, then I will link that video below as well, so you can go and watch that too. So what exactly is the BMAT? As I mentioned, the BMAT is an admissions test, but unlike some other tests that you may take, this is a two hour pen and paper test, and it is used by a number of universities, and I'll get into that in a second, to test for applicants applying for courses such as medicine, dentistry, veterinary, I think some biomedical sciences as well, and it's not just in the UK, so I'm just looking at my laptop here, but this exam can also be taken in other countries such as Singapore, Spain, Malaysia, Thailand, Hungary, Croatia and the Netherlands. The exam itself was initially developed at Cambridge because a lot of the academics were requesting some sort of um, test or procedure to be able to differentiate the number of applicants that they were getting. And this is why if you try to look up information on the BMAT, the BMAT itself doesn't have an official website and you will find most of this information on the Cambridge admissions, sorry, the Cambridge assessment admissions testing.com. So that's where you'll find all of the information and this is unlike the UCAT which is a consortium and obviously has its own website. And the exam was only used uh, originally in I think Cambridge, Oxford and UCL I believe but obviously now it's been taken up by lots of different universities. Now I know I keep referring back to the UCAT exam but some people do see the BMAT as an alternative to the UCAT exam and I'll get into a little bit more about like the similarities and differences as we go throughout this video but to give you a brief overview basically the BMAT assesses you on a number of skills and abilities such as scientific information, problem solving, critical thinking and communication skills. Now when it comes to booking and sitting the exam, be aware that the BMAT has set dates, which means you can't really pick and choose what dates you want to take this exam on. So make sure you know exactly when these dates are and that you keep them free. In the UK specifically, the two main dates are in September and November, and I can't remember the exact dates or the exact days of these, but that's when they are generally offered in the UK. In other countries, again, there are set dates, and again, these are September and November, but I think in certain countries there is also a February date, and I guess that may have something to do with the way that their admissions work. I'm not too familiar with that, but I will leave the website below, so if you are planning on taking this exam outside of the UK, then you can get a bit more information about what those February dates are. Now, I will say one thing, and that is when you are deciding which date you want to sit your exam, and also I should probably mention that if you sit your exam in September, you will get your results before sending your application off, um, because of the application deadline is I think sometime in October. But if you do decide to sit the exam in November, that means you have already sent your applications off to the universities without knowing what your scores are. Originally, it used to be November only, and I think it's only in the last two or three years that they've introduced a September exam date. But regardless, go on the website and I will insert a clip here of some universities and what dates they accept, because I think some universities only want a one or the other. And I think it's for the Oxford undergraduate ones, and let me just check my laptop. Yeah, so for the undergraduate medical course at Oxford, they only accept the November exams. So if you are planning on applying to Oxford as an undergraduate, then make sure you book a November exam and not the September one, because otherwise it's not going to be counted. The other thing I will mention, and this is from personal experience, is that if you've never sat the BMAT exam before, the admissionstesting.org, which is the um, Cambridge Admissions assessment testing website that I mentioned from before. If you have never sat the BMAT exam before, this website can be quite confusing and I personally found it quite difficult to just navigate my way around and find all of the necessarily necessary information that I need. And what I would highly recommend here is going on the Medify website where they have 
have a BMAT checklist and they essentially talk you through every single step that you need to do in preparation for your exam. And that's really, really useful because it helps you think about some of the important things you need to consider, um, like the dates that I mentioned of when you need to book your exam and some of the venues and all of those sorts of stuff. So I will link that below and yes, so before you actually start preparing for the exam in terms of like practice or whatever, it's really good to go through that checklist and know exactly the kind of things you need to consider. Now I am working with Medify to bring this video to you today, so I will be referencing and putting links down below to any of their features and products that I personally think you will find useful. Medify's BMAP platform and their course has been updated for the 2020 curriculum, so all of the checklist things will be up to date and all of the relevant information will be in one place, so hopefully that will make it as easy as possible for you. So the exam itself is divided into three sections and I'm going to go through each of them individually and try and give you examples that I got from the Medify website to give you a bit of an overview of what sort of things you may be expected to know. Section 1 tests for general aptitude as well as skills in problem solving, critical thinking, understanding arguments, as well as some general data analysis. Now this is the section that gets most compared to the format of the UCAT exam. It is multiple choice and you have 60 minutes to work through 30 five questions. The only difference being that this is a written exam unlike having to do it on a computer with the UCAT. Now here on the screen is an example of a critical thinking question that I got from the Medify question bank. Feel free to pause the video and have a little bit of a read. As I said, because the exam is handwritten, essentially what will happen is you will enter the hall, you will sit down, you will be given section one of your exam, you will fill it out in the 60 minutes that you have, then the timer will go off, these papers will be collected, and and then you will be given section two. Now I thought it's important to mention that because when I went to sit my exam, I thought that you would get all three papers in one go, but no, they get given to you in a consecutive order. Now moving on to section two, this section tests for scientific knowledge and also the application of that knowledge. Again, it is multiple choice and you have 30 minutes to answer 27 questions. Now the important part about this exam is that it doesn't necessarily matter how well you know something, what matters is how you can apply the information that you know. Now naturally this does mean that you do have to have a bit of an information of things like biology, chemistry, maths and physics, but to a UK level this is generally around GCSE standard. However, if you are unsure whether you have covered everything that you needed to know in your GCSEs, or if you are a graduate like me and you've been out of school for like a really long time and you can't remember like physics or like circuits or something, then I would recommend going on to the BMAT tutorial section where they've got like the entire BMAT syllabus and you can sort of work through everything, get your head around the knowledge and the topics that you need to cover before you actually go in and start practicing questions for section two. This is also really useful if you're an international student and your syllabus differs a little bit from UK GCSEs. Now I've put up an example of a physics question on the screen now and I hope that this can demonstrate to you that when you acquire the basic knowledge, so knowing what acceleration is, what velocity is, what displacement is, and how you can actually calculate them, then you will be able to tackle the question relatively easily. Now I should say, and I probably should have said this earlier, but the BMAT exam does not allow calculators. Now before you freak out and get really worried because that was my initial reaction when I first found out, this isn't necessarily a bad thing because it just means that the numbers that they give you are easy to work with. And they would never ask you anything super complicated where you need to do pages and pages of like calculations. So don't worry about that, the numbers are relatively simple, but yeah, this is a calculator free exam. Now moving on to section 3, this section tests for your written communication. And essentially you have 30 minutes to write a mini essay demonstrating how you have developed your thoughts, your ideas, and how concisely and effectively you've been able to communicate those ideas and thoughts in a written format. You typically get a choice of three questions I believe and you can just choose one of them and then write your essay. So to give you an example of these essays I will put on the screen right now an example of the essay topics that were from a official BMAT exam back in 2017. So you can just pause the screen and have a little bit of a read. 
I know this may seem a little bit daunting, especially if you've just had a read of those questions and thought, oh my god, I don't even know where to begin. But honestly, I think with a little bit of practice, you will be able to still discuss certain topics, even if you're not an expert in them, and still be able to develop your thoughts and develop your ideas, and that's essentially what they look for. So I wouldn't completely panic, and just know that with practice, it will become much, much easier. So the way that section 3 is scored, it is divided into two parts. One is your level of written English, and this can be marked as being A, C or E, obviously A being the highest and E being the lowest, and also the quality of your written content, which is marked from 1 to 5. So the highest mark that you can get for this section would be a 5A. Now if you're wondering about the exact marking criteria and how this is decided, I have left below a link that talks you through the exact marking criteria and what they look for in order for you to reach the highest scores. So when it comes to the actual preparation that you need to do for the BMAT exam, I think the most most important things are getting a really good understanding of what is being asked of you, as well as having a really good understanding, for section 2 specifically, of biology, chemistry, maths and physics to the standard that you need. So knowing those two things before you start your preparation will be a huge huge boost compared to just diving straight in. Now when I sat the exam myself a while ago, I did make a video of the pro process and I I was really really unprepared because I hadn't found a good resource to try and learn my GCSE biology, chemistry, maths and physics because as I said because I was a graduate I think the last time I had done GCSEs must have been years and years ago and I remember wasting a lot of time just looking on the internet and trying to find like a syllabus and trying to find somewhere where I can get all of the information from. And this is why I put such a big emphasis on the BMAT syllabus that Medify are offering. And I know that I'm speaking about that in the context of section 2, but I think it's equally important to do a similar thing with section 1. A personal mistake that I made, I think, with BMAT and UKCAT was that I underestimated the amount of practice that you actually have to do. I thought that as long as I have a general idea, I should just be able to walk in there and, you know, get good enough scores, but that's not the case. Practice definitely makes perfect, and I really hope that you don't make the same mistakes as I did. So, let us assume that you are now adequately prepared with all of the preliminary information and the preliminary knowledge that you need to actually start getting into the practice papers. Now I'm specifically talking about section 1 and 2 here, but we'll get on to section 3 shortly. Now when I was preparing for my exam, I used a book, and the, a book is good enough. But the issue with the book is that unlike using online resources, you don't have the same level of feedback. And what I mean by that is that on Medify, you can answer a question, you can mark it, and immediately you get feedback on how you've answered your question. And that can give you feedback straight away and let you know what you're doing right and what you can improve on. And I think that's a really, really helpful feature. And finally, moving on to section three. Now again, this is something that students may think that they can't actually revise for because you know, you may think, well, I either know the topic or I don't, but I, I don't agree with that at all. I think while you may not necessarily be able to practice for the topic or the question that has been asked of you, you can absolutely practice for things like timing strategy, planning your essay out, figuring out the structure of a good essay. Because being able to tackle all of that means that you'll be able to more confidently tackle the question, even if you aren't an expert in the topic. And actually, when I showed you an example of some of the essay topics that you may get given earlier in this video, one of the questions was, he who has never learned to obey cannot be a good commander. And as I said, that was an actual essay topic that was uh, picked out from the 2017 exam. Now, what Medify have done is they have taken these topics from all of the previous past papers and given you a section of notes, basically, on how to tackle that question. So on the screen right now, I'm showing you that page for the question I just mentioned, and it goes through a number of useful things, such as defining the statement, to be able to get you to think about these things and help you get a better idea of how to tackle questions. Now, the final thing I want to emphasize, and I think I've mentioned it plenty of times in this video, but I'll say it again, that practice really does make perfect. Unlike the UCAT exam, which only has three mocks available, three official mocks, I should say, the BMAT has loads. All of the past papers can be found on the Cambridge um, Admissions Testing website. So you can get those, work under time conditions when you're ready, and actually assess yourself and see how you're doing. 
I know a lot of people find the BMAT exam daunting and I have heard in the past students talking about how the BMAT is more difficult than the UCAT. I think that comes down to interpretation. I personally prefer the BMAT over the UCAT and I think one of the biggest things is because I feel like you have more control over the BMAT and you can practice and prepare a bit more. Well, that was my personal opinion anyway. I know everybody thinks about these things a little bit differently. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. All of the links that I mentioned will be downstairs, so go and have a look at them. And I wish you all the very best. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.